Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. We move on the example 2 of bending stress in straight beams. This question involves the combination of concentrated load, distributed load, and moment. The question is, the simply supported beam shown in the figure has the cross-sectional area of 80 times 100 millimeters, which carries a uniformly distributed load and bending moment of 25 kilonewton per meters and 40 kilonewton meters respectively. Find the reaction forces at the supports A and C. Draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for the beam. Find the maximum shear force and maximum bending moment of the beam. Calculate the area moment of inertia of the beam and determine the maximum normal stress and the maximum shear stress due to bending. Here we have a bending moment at A, a distributed load along BC, and two concentrated loads at the supports A and C. To solve this problem, first we have to draw a free body diagram of the whole beam. We remove the supports at A and C and replace with the reaction forces. Before we apply static equilibrium equations, we have to convert the distributed load into imaginary concentrated load. We have to multiply the value of distributed load with the length of the distributed load. In here, we get 80 kN and the imaginary concentrated load is acting at the centroid of the distributed load, which is at the center of the distributed load. And the distance of the imaginary concentrated load from the point A is 3.2 meters. After that, we apply static equilibrium equations, summation of moment at A equal to 0, and we get Cy equals to 45 kN. Then summation of Fy equals to 0, and we get Ay equals to 35 kN. Then we replace the unknown forces at A and C with 35 kN and 45 kN. After that, we have to cut the beam into sections. If the beam is subjected to concentrated load, then we cut the section in between the loads. But if the beam is subjected to distributed load, then we cut the section within the load. First, we have section AB, and the second is section BC. For section AB, first, we draw the free body diagram of section AB. Then we draw the positive internal shear force and bending moment at the cutting point where the shear force is downward and the bending moment is counterclockwise. We mark this cutting point as point 1. So the internal shear force and internal bending moment at this point we noted as V1 and M1. Next we note the longest distance as X. This is because the length varies from 0 to 1.6 meters. After that, we apply static equilibrium equations to find the internal shear force and internal bending moment. These values can be in constant value or in a function of x, depend on the equation that we have. In this section, the internal bending moment is in x function, which is negative 40 plus 35x kilonewton meters. And the internal shear force is in constant value, which is 35 kN. For section BC, the basic concept is the same. Draw the free body diagram of section BC. Then draw the positive internal shear force and bending moment at the cutting point. We mark this cutting point as point 2. So the internal shear force becomes V2 downward and the internal bending moment becomes M2 counterclockwise. After that, we noted the longest distance as X. X for section BC varies from 1.6 to 4.8 meters. Then we use the longest distance as a reference to find the other distance. For example, the distance from B to the cutting point is X minus 1.6 meters. And the distance from imaginary concentrated load to the cutting point is x minus 1.6 meters 
divided by 2. But before that, this imaginary concentrated load is not same as previous imaginary concentrated load because at this time, the length is not constant at 3.2 meters anymore. The length of this distributed load varies from 0 to 3.2 meters. So the length of this distributed load is x minus 1.6 meters and the imaginary concentrated load becomes 25x minus 40 kN. After that, we apply static equilibrium equations to find the M2 and V2. Then we get M2 equals to negative 72 plus 75x minus 12.5x squared kN meters and V2 equals to 75 minus 25x kN. Both of the values are in function of x, due to the beam is subjected to distributed load. Then we substitute all the values into the table. We just rewrite 35 kN for the value of v, since it is constant value. Then for the function of x, we substitute the value of x to get the value of v and m. After that, we plot the shear force value versus x in the shear force diagram. Then we can determine the maximum shear force value, which is 45 kN. Before we draw the bending moment diagram, we look at the curve of shear force is crossing the x-axis. This point is important for us to know because at this point, it can be a peak or minimum value of bending moment. But we don't know the x value during it cross the x axis. To find the value of x when v equals to 0, we have to identify which section it cross the x axis. Since it cross the x axis in section BC, then we recall the equation of v and m in section BC. Then when v equals to 0, we get x equals to 3 meters. So when x equals to 3, then we get the m value is 40.5 kN meters. After that, we add the row of the table to substitute the value of v and m when x equals to 3. Then we may proceed to plot the moment value versus x in the bending moment diagram and we can determine the maximum bending moment value which is 40.5 kN meters. After that, we calculate the area moment of inertia of rectangular cross-section beam which is I equals to BH cube over 12. Then we can use that value to calculate the maximum normal stress due to bending. And we get the value of maximum normal stress due to bending is 303.6 MPa. And the last one is to calculate the value of maximum shear stress. We substitute all the values in the formula of maximum shear stress. And we get tau max is 8.4 MPa. That's all. I hope you guys understand and able to solve the problem of beam regarding on the combination of concentrated load, distributed load, and moment. Thank you.